Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we'll be making Flappy Bird. It's a simple mobile game where you play as a bird and avoid the moving pipes. Even though the idea is straightforward, this game dominated 2014. There were so many people addicted with this game to the point that the creator had to remove it from the digital shelves for the greater good of humanity. Its concept is quite simple, making it a great starting point for people who want to learn how to make games. And now, let's try making it in Fabgate. Okay, so we have a blank level, and the first thing that we have to work on is making the assets for the game. In Flappy Bird, we have three components. We have the bird, we have the pipe, then we have the ground. There's also the background stuff, such as the clouds and the buildings, but for the most part, these are your three essentials. And with that being said, allow me to spend the next three seconds working on all the visuals. Alright, so I just finished making all the blocks we'll need for this tutorial. We have this little yellow guy, which will be the bird. Then for the pipe, I divided it into three sections, so we have the bottom part, the middle part, and the top part. And for the ground, I made a grass block, a dirt block, and the darker variations. Now that we're done creating our assets, it's time to do some construction work. Starting with the pipe. You would want to have something that's relatively tall, so I'm going to make mine around 10 blocks high, which I think should be good enough. And for the ground, let's start by adding a layer of dirt. And the reason why we made darker variations is so that we could have this stripe pattern. We'll top this off with a layer of grass and extend it until we have something that can span across the screen of any device. Now that we're done constructing our elements, it's time for the fun part, coding. We could start right away by placing all of our code on the ground, but I think this is the perfect segue for me to introduce the script block into the scene. It's a good practice to make use of script blocks to hold all of your code, so that we could keep our workspace clean and organized. We now have to worry about what happens at the start of the game, or the initialization process. We'll start by bringing all of our objects inside the script block, and we'll assign them to the respective variables so that it will be easier for us to refer to them later on. When we press play, you can see that, well, actually we can't see anything apart from the script block, and the reason for that is since we place all of our assets inside a block, they would be hidden by default. Therefore, the next thing that we should do is to show them using the set visible block. We only need to set the visibility of the bird in the ground because we'll be creating copies of our pipes ourselves later on. While we're at it, let's also set the position of our bird to be around 6 blocks up in the air. And as you can see, the bird and the ground are now visible. Let's now divert our attention to the camera. At this point, it's completely up to you to customize and play around with the values until you have a shot that looks good enough. I'm going to set my camera distance to around 45, and for the rotation, I would want to have it pan to the right as well as add some tilt, so I'm going to set it to around 20 and 7.5. And for the position, I will take the position of our bird and add an offset to that to bring it to the left side of the screen. Let's also control the shadows of our game by using the set light block. I'll set it to 45 and see what happens. And I quite like that gradient in the shadows. And if I set the Y value to 180, it will reflect on the other side. Now that we've set up the camera, we have a pretty nice view. However, our ground, as of right now, is completely static. We'll set the position of the ground by using a current frame block. This block outputs the number of frames that have passed since the start of the game. We'll multiply it with a negative value in order for our ground to move to the left. You might think that it works, but there will come a point where our ground just leaves the screen and never returns, so... How do we fix this issue? Well, to a particular block from the math section, Modulo. The modulo block outputs the remainder of a division. Say we want to divide the number 5 by 3. If you know your times tables, you could probably see right away that 5 is not divisible by 3, so our result would have some decimals. So now we raise the question, how many times does 3 go into 5? And we know the answer to that, it's 1. So we subtract 5 by 3 and we get 2, which is our remainder. Modulo takes care of all that trouble. So when we assign 5 and 3 as our inputs, our result will be 2. What happens when we set this to 6? Well, the answer will be 0 because 6 is a multiple of 3. What happens if this is 7? Well, the answer will be 1 because 3 goes into 7 2 times and 7 minus 6 is equal to 1. You might have noticed a pattern, and that is that our result will always range from 0 to 2, which is 1 less than 3. The modulo block is particularly useful for clamping values, 
which will be the secret on how we'll move the ground. We'll create an illusion that the ground is continuously moving to the left, but when in reality, it's just shifting back and forth. All we need to do is to attach this wire to a module block and have the divisor be any even number. In this case, I'll set it to 2. And as you can see, our ground is still moving, but it will not set off to the distance anymore. Let's now focus on the bird. We'll use a touch sensor to detect player input, as well as the tweet variable to signify that the game has started. We'll set it to run the code at the start of the touch, as well as an if statement that checks the state of the variable. And if it's false, we'll set it to true so that it will only run the code once. After that, let's also change the velocity of our bird to go upwards using a set velocity block. We'll set it to around 6.25. And now the bird flies. Well, fly is a very loose term and I think we need to change the gravity as well. We'll head over to the physics tab again and pick set gravity. And we'll set the y value to be negative 20. Now, the gravity is stronger and the bird flies a little better. But what happens when we just spam click our screen? As you can see, our bird has now flown into space. So how do we fix this issue? Well, let's introduce another block from the math section, world to screen. This block takes a vector position and translates it into screen coordinates. Let's bring in a screen size block and inspect the values. As you can see, these are the dimensions of this little screen. And what does that info tell us? Well, for an object to be inside a screen, its screen coordinates have to be between 0 and whatever the screen size is. And for us to determine whether the bird is way too high, their y coordinate has to be less than 0. So we'll set up an if statement that basically runs this code only if the bird is inside the screen. And as you can see, our bird can still reach the top of our screen, but they can't fly further. However, this movement still feels strange, so let's try changing the bird's rotation. We'll bring in a variable to keep track of the rotation, and we'll set it to 60 every time the bird flaps. For this next code, we only want to run it once the game has started. We'll update the variable to decrease every frame, as well as actually update the bird's rotation using that value. It works, but the bird kind of just jumps into that position. So we'll use a lerp to provide a smoother transition. We'll plug in the bird's rotation as the starting point, the variable as the goal point, and have the amount be 0 0.1. And now, the bird's movement feels more natural. Before we keep going, let's make use of comments and label everything we've done so far. It's also good practice to use them to make it easier to navigate. Let's work on spawning the pipes. We would want to generate them within a fixed rate, so let's create a timer using the modulo block. We'll set it to around 120 so it runs every 2 seconds. Let's also have it only run once the game has started. Let's have a loop that runs twice to create our top and bottom pipe. We'll use a create object block to spawn a copy of our pipe, and let's also insert it into a list. We now have to set the position of this newly created pipe. For the x position, let's set it to 3 for now in order for us to actually see it spawning. For the y position, we would want to have a random height for our pipes. So before the loop, let's generate a random number and assign it to a variable. We'll attach this variable to the y input. However, we can't just leave this as it is because we want to create a gap between the pipes. And for us to achieve that, the top pipe has to go upwards while the bottom pipe has to go downwards. First, let's keep track of the counter by assigning it into a variable. Next, since the index ranges from 0 to 1, if we subtract that by 0 0.5, we will have a negative number, negative 0 0.5, and a positive number, 0 0.5. The first copy goes down while the second copy goes up. Let's multiply it by a number to determine how big the opening is, say around 12.05. You can see that it works, but we still need to have the top pipe to face downwards. We'll use the index and multiply it by 180 to have it do just that. It works, however, as of now, they're overlapping one another because we haven't added any movement yet. I guess I should use this moment to talk about loops a little more. The reason why we use lists to keep track of our pipes is so that it would be possible to loop through and apply some code to each item. Speaking of which, let's have an increment for the list length to update our list, and use that for the snap value of the block. We first need to check if that item exists, and we can do that by using an equal objects block. 
If this is true, then that means that this item is empty and we should ignore it. Otherwise, let's keep track of the object and the index using variables. We'll set the position of the pipe to move to the left. And it's important that the value you put is the same as the one you use in moving the ground. That works, so let's bring the X position back to something like 12. Let's now implement some code that checks if the player has passed through the pipes. We'll use a truth list to keep track of that info. And we'll divide the index by 2 and floor it. So for numbers 0 and 1, they would fall under 0. For numbers 2 and 3, they would fall under 1. And so on and so forth. If this is false, then we need to check the X positions of the pipe and the bird. Let's actually break the pipe's position vector and take the X value. Then, we'll check if that variable is less than the bird's. If it is, then that means that the bird has successfully gone through the gap. We'll play a little sound effect to indicate that, as well as set that boolean to true so that we don't have to run it anymore. And as you can see, or here, it works! Let's also add a sound effect whenever the bird flaps its wings. Once the pipe has left the screen, we would want to delete it at some point. So let's once again use its X position and check if it's less than 0 for now. If that's the case, then we use the destroy object block to delete that copy. Press play and it works! We'll set this to around negative 0.8. I also added an if condition at the start of the loop because we only want to execute it once the game has started. Let's now worry about the collision. If you remember earlier, we only changed the position of the bird in the Y axis. We left X and Z at 0, and that was deliberate to make this bit more convenient. Since all of our objects are moving in the X axis, that means if the bird has collided with anything, there will always be a change in its X position. So when it comes to checking for that, we simply need to see if the X value is at 0. If it isn't, then the player hit something and they lose the game. Let's bring a loose block and set the start variable back to false to disable all the other code. Let's also add another boolean to disable the controls and the ground movement. Let's top it all off with a sound effect. And as you can see, it works! Once the bird has hit something, the game triggers the lose condition. Finally, let's add a scoring system to our game by simply having an increment to a variable whenever the bird passes through the pipes, and we'll display it using a set score block. That's it for this tutorial, I hope you learned something and gave you an insight on how the game works behind the scenes. This video marks the first tutorial, well, <laughs> actually that's a lie, I've made them before, but this would be the first of a weekly series where I break down different games and talk you through the process and how to make them. Um, so hopefully you can expect one every Friday. Anyways, I'll see you at the next one.